Good morning and welcome to Bible in a Year. As today we are on day 237 of going through the Bible in 365 days. This is the Bible, the greatest love story ever told. Uh, the reason why it is the greatest love story ever told is because this is a story from the beginning of time where God has walked alongside with his creation. Um, first creation being Adam and Eve, all the way to the very end in which we hear about the heaven and earth being no more and God welcoming the holy new Jerusalem, uh, new heaven and new earth uh, for us to, to live in forever. And so uh, we are reading all about this. Uh, right now we are in the period known as the period of exile. Um, as you read through the Bible, um, the Bible goes through many different periods. Uh, this is the longest, largest period. This is the period of exile where the people, um, since the time of Abraham, have lived in this land, this promised land. And now they're getting kicked out of the promised land um, for 70 years. Uh, so they wander um, the north in Assyria, then the south in Babylon, and then together in Persia. And then they're at, and then they're instructed that they can go back to Jerusalem, and praise God. And so this is what happens during the period of exile. So today we're going to be learning a little bit about this period, with Jeremiah chapters eighteen to nineteen, Ezekiel chapter forty-seven to forty-eight, and Proverbs chapter fifteen verses twenty-one to twenty-four. A little bit of reflection on the word. Jeremiah eighteen begins with comparing Israel to potter's clay, which can be reworked by the potter into any vessel he chooses. In this analogy, God is the potter. Regardless of our past, God can shape us into the future he wills for us. In Jeremiah chapter 18, he also we also hear about plotting against Jeremiah by those who have trusted in the falsehood they have heard from their leaders and the false prophets. They have been telling the people what they want to hear, not what's the truth. At the end of Jeremiah 18, the prophet is angry with the people for plotting against him. Similarly, Moses became angry when he led Israel during Exodus. God tells Jeremiah in chapter 19 to buy a potter's flask and take some of the elders with him to the valley of Hinnom, where children have been sacrificed. There he will shatter the potter's flask as an image of what will happen to the people when Babylon conquers them. Jeremiah does not revel in his prophecy of coming destruction. This is simply a consequence of the people's action. Like the people of Jeremiah's time, our actions have consequences. We must repent and seek God's forgiveness. Well, there's still time. Ezekiel chapter 47 to 48. These come at the conclusion of Ezekiel. We have the image of water running from underneath the right side of the temple to the east. This living water will bring life to the sea. This is a prophecy of how the Lord will not only bring his people back from Babylon, but ultimately bring life to the entire world through Jesus. On every crucifix, there is the mark of the spear on the side of Jesus' body. From God, John's gospel, we know that a Roman soldier pierced his side with a lance and blood and water flowed out. You want to see that this, it's in John 19, verses 34. The father, fathers of the church saw this as a symbol of baptism and communion. Here we see the connection between Jesus' body and the temple. Um, in Proverbs Chapter 15, verses 21 to 24, Solomon instructs his younger counterparts on the importance of wise counsel and judgment. A wise judge keeps a straight course, leans on many advisors, finds joy in giving timely words, and seeks an upward path of life, not the downward path of death. So, let's read together. Jeremiah chapter 18 and 19. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand, so the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter does? declares the Lord, like clay in the hands of the potter, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. 
If at any time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be uprooted, torn down, and destroyed, and if that nation I warn repents of its evil, then I will relent and not inflict on it the disaster I have planned. And if at another time I announce that a nation or kingdom is to be built up and planted, and if it is, does evil in, the, in my sight and does not obey me, then I will reconsider the good I have intended to do for it. Now therefore, say to the people of Judah and those living in Jerusalem, This is what the Lord says. Look, I am preparing a disaster for you and devising a plan against you. So turn from your evil ways, each one of you, and reform your ways and your actions. But they will reply, It's no use. We will continue with our own plans. Each of us will follow the stubbornness of his evil heart. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. Inquire amongst the nations. Who has ever heard anything like this? A most horrible thing has been done by virgin Israel. Does the snow of Lebanon ever vanish from its rocky slopes? Do its cool waters from the distant sources ever cease to flow? Yet my people have forgotten me. They burn incense to worthless idols, which made them stumble in their way. And in the ancient paths, they made them walk in, by in bypaths and on roads not built up. Their land will be a wasteland, an object of lasting scorn. All who pass by will be appalled, and they'll shake their heads like a wind from the east. I will scatter them before their enemies. I will show them my back and not my face in the days of their disaster." They said, come, let's make plans against Jeremiah. For the teachings of the law by the priest will not be lost, nor will counsel from, counsel from the wise, nor were the word from the prophets. So come, let's attack with our tongues and pay no attention to anything he says. Listen to me, O Lord. Hear what my accusers are saying. Should good be repaid with evil? Yet they have dug a pit for me. Remember that I stood before you and spoke in their behalf to turn the wrath away from them. So give their children over to famine, hand them over to the power of the sword. Let their wives be made childless and widows. Let their men be put to death, their young men slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from their houses when they suddenly bring invaders against them. For they have dug a pit to capture me and have hidden snares for my feet. But you know, O Lord, all their plots to kill me. Do not forgive their crimes or blot out their sins before your sight. Let them be overthrown before you. Deal with them in the time of their anger. Jeremiah chapter 19. This is what the Lord says. Go and buy a clay jar from a potter. Take along some of the elders of the people and of the priests. And go to the valley of Ben-Hinnom, near the entrance of the potter gate. There proclaim the words I tell you, and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah, and the people of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Listen, I am going to bring a disaster on this place that will make the ears of everyone who hears of it tingle. For they have forsaken me, have made, me, made this a place of foreign gods. They have burnt sacrifices in it to gods that neither they, nor their fathers, nor the kings of Judah ever knew. And they have filled this place with the blood of the innocent. They have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as offerings to Baal. Sometimes I did not command or mention, nor did it enter my mind. So beware, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer call this place Topheth, or the Valley of Ben-Hinnom, but the Valley of Slaughter. In this place... I will ruin the plans of Judah and Jerusalem. I will make them fall by the sword before their enemies at the hands of those who seek their lives. And I will give their carcasses as food to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth. I will devastate the city and make it an object of scorn. All who pass will be appalled, will scoff because of its wounds. I will make them eat the flesh of their sons and daughters, and they will eat one another's flesh during the stress of the siege imposed on them by the enemies who seek their lives. The, then break the jar while those who go with you are watching, and say to them, This is what the Lord Almighty says, I will smash this nation and this city just as a, this potter's jar is smashed and cannot be repaired. They will bury the dead in Topheth, 
until there is no more room. This is what I will do to this place. And to those who live here, declares the Sovereign Lord, I will make the city like Topheth. The houses in Jerusalem and those of the kings of Judah will be defiled like this place. Topheth, all the houses where they burned incense on the roofs to all the starry hosts and poured up drink offerings to other gods. Jeremiah then returned from Topheth, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy, and stood in the court of the Lord's temple, and said to all the people, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, Listen, I am going to bring on this city and the villages around it every disaster I pronounce against them, because they were stiff-necked and would not listen to my word. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading comes from Ezekiel, chapters 47 and 48. This will be the end of Ezekiel. Chapter 47. The man brought me back to the entrance of the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple towards the east. For the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside of the outer gate facing east, and the water was flowing from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and then led me through the water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to my waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross, because the water had risen and it was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the banks of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, This water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the sea. When it empties into the sea, the water will become fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be a large number of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everywhere will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Engalim. Then there will be place for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the great sea. But the swamps and marshes will become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear, because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food, and their leaves for healing. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. These are the boundaries by which you are to divide the land of the inheritance amongst the twelve tribes of Israel, with two portions for Joseph, you are divided equally amongst them. Because I swore with uplifting hands to give it to your forefathers, this land will become your inheritance. This is to be the boundaries of the land. On the north side, it will run from the great sea by the Heathlon road past Lebo Hamath to Zadad, Baratha, and Sibrim, which lies on the border between Damascus and and Hamath, as far as Hazer Hadakam, which is on the border of Haran. The boundary will extend from the sea to Hazar Anan, along the northern border of Damascus, with the border of Hamath to the north. This will be the north boundary. On the east side, the boundary will run between Haran and Damascus along the Jordan between Gilead and the land of Israel, to the eastern sea and as far as Tamar. This will be the east boundary. On the south side, it will run from Tamar as far as the waters of Meribah Kadesh, then along the wadi of Egypt to the great sea. This will be the south boundary. On the west side, the great sea will be the boundary to a point opposite Lebo Hamath, this will be the west boundary. You are to distribute this land amongst yourselves accordingly to the tribes of Israel. You are to allot it 
as an inheritance for yourselves and for the aliens who have settled among you and who have children. You are to consider them as native-born Israelites. Along with you, they are to be allotted an inheritance amongst the tribes of Israel. In whatever tribe the alien settles, there you are to give him his inheritance, declares the Sovereign Lord. Chapter 48 These are the tribes listed by name. At the northern frontier, Dan will be of one portion. It will follow the Hethlon Road to Lebo Hamath. Hazer and Nan, and the northern border of Damascus, next to Hamath, will be part of its border, from the east side to the west side. Asher will be one portion. It will border the, temp the territory of Dan from east to west. Nephtali will have one portion. It will border the territory of Asher from east to west. Manasseh will have one portion. It will border the territory of Nephtali from east to to west. Ephraim will have one portion. It will border the territory of Manasseh from east to west. Reuben will have one portion. It will border the territory of Ephraim from east to west. Judah will have one portion. It will border the territory of Reuben from east to west. Bordering the territory of Judah from east to west will be the portion you are to present as a special gift. It will be 25,000 cubits wide and its length from east to west will equal one of the tribal portions. The sanctuary will be in the center of it. The special portion you are to offer to the Lord will be 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide. This will be the sacred portion for the priests. It will be 25,000 cubits long on the north side, 10,000 cubits wide on the west side, 10,000 cubits wide on the east side, and 25,000 cubits long on the south side. In the center of it will be the sanctuary of the Lord. This will be for the consecrated priests, the Zadokites, who are faithful in serving me and did not go astray as the Levites did when the Israelites went astray. It will be a special gift to them from the sacred portions of the land, a most holy portion bordering the territory of the Levites. Alongside the territory of the priests, the Levites will have an allotment 25,000 cubits long and 10,000 cubits wide. Its total length will be 25,000 cubits, and its width 10,000 cubits. They must not sell or exchange any of it. This is the best of the land, and must not pass in other hands, because it is holy to the Lord. The remaining area, 5,000 cubits wide and 25,000 cubits long, will be for the common use of the city, for houses and for pasture land. The city will be in the center of it. And we'll have these measurements, the north side 4,500 cubits, the south side 4,500 cubits, the east side 4,500 cubits, and the west side 4,500 cubits. The pasture land for the city will be 250 cubits on the north, 250 cubits on the south, 250 cubits on the east, and 250 cubits on the west. What remains of the area, bordering on the sacred portion and running the length of it, will be 10,000 cubits on the east side and 10,000 cubits on the west side. Its produce will supply food for the workers of the city. The workers from the city who farm it will come from all the tribes of Israel. The entire portion will be a square, 25,000 cubits on each side. As a special gift, you will set aside the sacred portion along with the property of the city. What remains on both sides of the area formed by the sacred portion and the city property will belong to the prince. It will extend eastward from the 25,000 cubits of the sacred portion to the eastern borders and western, and westward from the 25,000 cubits to the western border. Both of these areas running the length of the tribal portions will belong to the prince, and the sacred portion with the temple sanctuary will be in the center of them. So the property of the Levites and the property of the city will lie in the center of the area that belongs to the prince. The area belongs to the prince will lie between the border of Judah and the border of Benjamin. As for the rest of the tribes, Benjamin will have one portion. It will extend to the east side to the west side. Simon will have one portion and will border the territory of Benjamin from the east to west. 
Issachar will have one portion. It will border the territory of Simon from east to west. Zebulon will be one portion. It will border from the territory of Issachar from east to west. Gad will have one portion. It will border the territory of Zebulon from east to west. The southern border of Gad will run south from Tamar to the waters of the Meribah Kadesh, then along the wadi of Egypt to the great sea. This is the land you are to allot as an inheritance to the tribes of Israel, and these will be their portion, declares the Sovereign Lord. These will be the exits of the city. Beginning on the north side, which is 4,500 cubits long, the gates of the city will be named after the tribes of Israel. The three gates on the north side will be the gates of Reuben, the gates of Judah, and the gates of Levi. On the east side, which is 4,500 cubits long, will be the three gates, the gates of Joseph, the gates of Benjamin, and the gates of Dan. On the south side, which measures 4,500 cubits, will be the three gates, the gates of Simon, the gates of Issachar, and the gates of Zebulon. And on the west side, which is 4,500 cubits long, will be three gates, the gates of Gad, the gates of Asher, and the gates of Naphtali. The distance all around will be 18,000 cubits, and the name of the city from that time on will be the Lord is there. Here ends the, our second reading and the end of the book of Ezekiel. Our final reading comes from Proverbs chapter 15, verses 21 to 25. Fully delights a man who lacks judgment, but a man of understanding keeps a straight course. Plans fail for lack of counsel, but with many advisors they succeed. A man finds joy in giving an apt reply, and how good is a timely word. The path of life leads upward for the wise to keep him from going down to the grave. Here ends a reading. Um, this just teaches us a little bit about how we are to keep wise counsel and judgment. Solomon teaches this to his younger counterparts and that they must keep a straight course for this course that God has us. He says neither to go to the left or to the right, but stay straight to um, look for the, the ways of God and to point ourselves towards life, the upward ascent uh, to God, uh, to strive to be like God um, in all of his glory, knowing good and evil, um, judging as God would, and, uh, and having many advisors that give timely words uh, and good counsel, that we might have joy in the words uh, that we say because they are of God. Uh, let's thank God through prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we give you praise. We thank you so much. Thank you for this day. Thank you for bringing us back to your word this day. Um, in this day 237, we thank you for continuing to speak to us in our minds, revealing us and into our hearts, moving our hearts to belong to you and whatever you call for us. We thank you. We give you praise. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May you be a blessing so that uh, and be blessed um, through reading this word by bringing it into yourself, to integrating it into your actions and words, that it's not just things of our lips, but that our hearts are close to it, and that we transform as if, like someone who goes in one gate and out another, transform and change, that we will never go back the same way we came. Uh, so may we always remember that, that when we go into worship, that we don't just worship with our lips, but we bring our hearts, our full hearts into worship with God in order so that he might change and transform. So when we leave, we are a different person. Thanks be to God. Amen.